The first step in establishing any kind of data space security in CenterPoint was to go ahead and turn on that security underneath file and preferences. And under file and preferences, there is an option for security and database security. And on that tab, you'll go ahead and turn the security on and set up a password for the user called administrator. After that, you can determine whether or not you want to go ahead and have additional users. If you are going to have additional users, you'll first want to open the database as your administrator. So you'll go to File and Open. Open it as the user administrator and put in the administrator password. When you're logged in as the administrator, and you can tell which user you're logged in as, um, on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you can see where it says User Administrator. Once you're logged in there as the administrator, then you'll go to File and Security. And the first thing you'll do is set up your password security options. And that's discussed in another video. But password security options determine how many characters a uh, password should be, um, whether it needs to have special characters, capital, non-capital letters, um, uppercase or lowercase. Um, so you'll want to establish the password security options then. After that, you can decide whether or not you want to have different users. And two of the reasons to have different users is, number one, it creates an audit trail showing what that user's done, what transactions they've added, which ones they've edited, which ones they've deleted, which ones they've voided, and what things they have, what things about the transaction they might have edited. Did they edit a profit center, an amount? So that stuff is maintained within the audit trail. The other thing it does is it allows you to set up um, restricted access to certain features within the program. So if you need any of those options, you'll want to create different database users. So I'm going to go to the database users option. And you can see here that I have already established a number of database users. There's usually three columns displayed, the username, the administrator, and whether or not they're enabled or disabled. If you want to turn one of those columns off, you can right click on the screen and you could hide the administrator column or hide the enabled column. To add a new user is pretty simple. You just click add user. You tell us what the user's name is. You put in a password that meets your password security options. And if your password security options said, um, if you had checked actually under your preferences, whether or not you wanted the user to be forced to change their password after the administrator sets the password, then this could be some sort of generic password. And the first time they log in, they'll be prompted to change it. Okay, after that, you would click Save. Now, there is a checkbox here to make it inactive, but it's not likely when you're creating a new user that you would make it inactive. There is a tab over at the top next to this General tab, which would allow you, if you've already established user groups, which is discussed in another video, but if you've established user groups, you can go over to that tab and assign them as a member of that group. So I can say that they are a member of this group and maybe they're also a member of that group. So they're going to inherit all of the um, access capabilities of that group. So I'm going to click Save and I've created my new user. Now, if a user um, is, uh, let's say that you a user lose, uh, leaves the company and you want to disable them, you can go ahead and highlight them and uh, right click on them and choose that you want to disable the user. Okay, so you'll see that my user is disabled. Now I do have an option at the bottom to delete a user, but I can only delete a user if they have not done anything in the system in terms of adding anything into the system, uh, editing a transaction or anything like that, because it is part of the audit trail. So once that's been done by that user, you can no longer delete them. The other thing that could disable a user is if you've set up password security options that would disable a user after unsuccessful attempts at their password. In that case, an administrator can log into CenterPoint using their administrator password and then right click on the user to enable them again. 
So I'm going to go ahead and enable that user again. Now, if that user forgot their password, at the same time, I could come back and right click and reset their password and then give them a different password. So those are some of the things that I can do um, to the users. You can also highlight a user and edit them, and that would allow you to either change their name or to change the active status on them. So you can either right click on them to inactivate them or you can edit them and go to the active status. I'm going to close that and there are some reports on users. You can go ahead and go to reports and underneath setup lists and underneath general there is going to be a report called the users report just telling you what users have been established. You'll have a report, a report for security policies by users. So as soon as you assign security policies, you can see those use security policies by user group. And then if you want to see what users are members of what groups, there is a report underneath audit reports for security users by user group.